Thank you. So I'm the co-founder and chair of the Baltic Sea Action Group. Emphasis on the word action. We are aiming to make a concrete um, action for the Baltic Sea climate and biodiversity. We're an independent uh, foundation. We started the Baltic Sea work um, 12 years ago, and the whole aim is to support the ecosystem and support the ecological balance in the Baltic Sea. How does the soil actually um, relate to this? I'll tell you later. Uh, the basic problem with the Baltic Sea is that it suffers from severe eutrophication. It's one of the most polluted sea areas in the world. And like all the other water bodies next to the intensive farming, it does have too, many, too much nutrients which increase the um, algae, while the nutrients actually should be in the field. So healthy soil minimizes the nutrient emissions to the water bodies. And also mitigating the climate change, we help the Baltic Sea as the Baltic Sea suffers from the climate change and the changes that it evidently brings. Caring for the soil helps the climate biodiversity at the Baltic Sea. Why do we actually take a look at the soil? Soil has a significant potential of storing carbon from atmosphere. So it's not enough to cut emissions. We need to cut emissions, but it's not enough. We need to also sequester carbon. And even the small changes in the soil carbon amount do have a significant effort because there's already more carbon in the soil than in the atmosphere and plants combined. So healthy soil secures better yields. This is obvious for the farmers, as we will hear later on today, but also minimizes emissions to water bodies. And of all the biodiversity of the Earth, 25% is in the soil. And as we all know, the climate change goes hand in hand with the biodiversity crisis. So we need to solve water, water uh, soil, uh, biodiversity, and climate together. So this is why we have started the carbon action a few years ago. What we're actually doing is a paradigm shift from degenerative farming to regenerative farming. Being sustainable is not enough anymore. The crisis is too deep. So we need to actually shift the paradigm. And how do we do that? We have the regenerative agriculture, which is actually, you can read it from here, um, regenerating the nature while we're producing food. Now we take a look at the soil and the carbon, but it regenerates the nature in, in total. But here we focus on the soil health and the carbon amount. And this is from my own farm. Um, those who have fields actually have the possibility to solve questions and to be part of the solution rather than part of the problem. This is when we started the um, scientific uh, experiences in our farm. The soil was very uh, poor and in bad condition, as you can see from the left picture. And um, on the right hand side, you can see what happened in two years when we had the good soil amendments and treatments for the soil. So it is possible to improve the health of the soil, even quite fast, if I would say. To scale up the carbon action, we have a platform which is um, very scientific and uh, science-based, science but we need, for the paradigm shift, we need to have decision makers, farmers, and companies like today, you will hear all of these, what we're doing and how can we actually make the paradigm shift together. We need to have everyone aboard. Science, Yari Liske will present it today. It's a very uh, multidisciplinary platform, a network of researchers. You can see how many institutes and different uh, universities we have there. And it's open for everyone, as science, science naturally is. So we are focusing on soil and plant processes, farming practices, and verification of the soil, uh, amount of carbon in the soil. So in order to have steering methods, we need to have verification. Of course, we take a look at the economics as well. Business platform will be presented today by Valio. And uh, in order to make any change in the society, we need to have business on board. And these different actors and different food chain companies are really committed to work with us. 
you will hear Juha talking about today. And last but not least, carbonation farms. We cannot make any paradigm shift or do anything with farming without actual real farmers. We have over 100 farmers which uh, participate to the carbon action and uh, we got the 100 farmers very fast. We actually had, we had to say even no to someone who wanted to join us, but in order to scale up this we have carbon action club which is open to everyone. But these 100 farmers are also scientific example farmers. So we also identified some bottlenecks in order to um, educate the farmers. We need to have very good agricultural advisors and we have a specific program for the agriculture advisors, how we can train them to be experts in soil health and carbon. Very good carbon farmer, also one educator will be speaking today, Juuso Joona. So please stay online. And how to scale up what we're doing actually, we have a very big aim of biodiversity, carbon in the soil, Baltic Sea and climate crisis, but how to scale up? Well, this is how we've done it. We had the first hundred pilot farms, then we have the Carbon Action Club, which has many, many farmers already. Then we have a company platforms, and companies also bring farmers to the education. And then we will be doing an online course of uh, regenerative farming and carbon farming, so that everyone who wants to have the information and wants to get education of the topic can join us. And of course, we started in Finland. Finland is a very good country to have a pilot example of the just systemic change. So I know that we have only 2 million hectares of field and it's enough. It's not enough to tackle the climate change, but it is enough to show the case of systemic change and be the example that can inspire other ones. And this is the online course which we are building of the regenerative carbon farming for farmers and consumers as well with world-class digital learning experts. We have a very good uh, partner with us. I hope everyone will take this course and, and get the basic idea of regenerative farming. Now I will leave some time for the questions, if there's any, and if not, I think we are going forward with the program. And you can see the um, contact information. Please contact us if you have any ideas later on how to support this work or be part of the change. Yes, thank you, Sara, for the very clear presentation. There has been some discussion. You mentioned the bottleness, but could you still emphasize that it's very important, of course, when you think about the systemic change and about a scaling action to identify the bottlenecks and how do you tackle them? Yes. Um, it's very, it's very hard work. It's mm. concrete work. If we notice that we have to train farmers, then we need to identify the who trains the farmers, and of course, then it's the agricultural advisors, and that's how we tackled one bottleneck. If we want to have a really big impact in society, we need to have companies, and we can identify big food companies which we need to have on board. And if we have something in science, then we also can start something which is focusing directly. So it's. It's hard work, it's step by step working towards that. But we try to have action underlined because I think we have enough papers and, and uh, roadmaps in the world. And of course, if we uh, talk about bottle next, then we have the policy. Is it steering the chains? That's the biggest steering method, or should be. Um, the present decisions of, of the common agricultural policy might not steer the change as strongly as we would have hoped. But then again, we have farmers already doing the change, so we have to show with the example what we can do. Thank you, Sara. And we would have uh, Elsie. I think we didn't have okay. more questions. We can go on with the program. Yes, here Thank you can you, see Sarah. some of the uh, cooperating partners and founders of the Carbon Action Platform. It's a huge platform, platform having different kind of funding, so thanks to everyone. Yes. Indeed, thank you for, for the funders.